Bruchem Aboim. Again, welcome to our home. Thank you for attending. Um, I'll repeat it again, but this will be the last lecture uh, for, until after Pesach. I'll give them two weeks so there will be no lectures. Uh, again, because of the holidays, and we'll be going away. So, again, I thought I'd give uh, a lecture. We just finished a series on the tabernacle, and uh, I'd like to do again with the clothing. But before we do that, I thought it'd be apropos to do a lecture called A Prayer for Salvation on Passover. So, again, next week we'll be celebrating the holiday of Pesach, Passover. Passover is the first of the Jewish holidays that are celebrated in the Hebrew calendar. It is a time when we thank our Father in Heaven for saving our ancestors from their oppressive slavery in Egypt. So this week on my thoughts, I would like to discuss the connection between our past and the present situation that we find ourselves living in today. You know, it seems the world is slowly moving away from its support of the State of Israel. Even the United States, Israel's staunchest ally, ally has wavered in its support. Somehow, Jewish blood just isn't as red as everyone else's. Somehow, burning Jewish babies in their cribs and raping Jewish women, somehow acceptable. We never thought for a moment that history could repeat itself, that we could be experiencing the same fears and concerns that our grandparents felt in the 1930s, especially in Germany. Now, we can put our faith in people, but as we witness, world opinion has shifted. The world is more concerned somehow about Hamas and the Palestinians than they are about the security and the well-being of the Jewish state and its civilian population. Jewish people living all over the world are being threatened. Anti-Semitism is alive and well everywhere. There is no longer any safe haven. So, so what are we supposed to do? Well, I think the only thing we can do is fight back. However, the world wants us to do so with one hand tied behind our backs. No army. No army in the history of the world has been held to the highest standard of warfare that the IDF faces in Gaza today. Somehow the United Nations or, or the World Court doesn't cry out about the displacement and killing of hundreds of thousands of Syrians by Assad or, or the Russian invasion of Ukraine by Putin. So who can we turn to? It seems that in the end, we will be left standing alone. Or will we? There's a story that I read that is written in the Parasan Ki Haggadah called The Night of Amuna, The Night of Belief. Again, that might help us to put things into a proper perspective. It's a story about a Jew named Zandel. Zandel was a poor innkeeper who couldn't pay his rent to the parts, uh, the nobleman who owns his inn. Zandel tried everything even begging the parts to give him a little more time, as if more time would have helped him to get the money that he owed. In reality, he was totally out of options. So his wife, who was a righteous woman, told him that a distance down the road was the synagogue of the Apt Rebbe, Rabbi Avram Yeshua Heschel of Apt, known as the Ohev Yisrael, the lover of Israel. She told him that the Rebbe was giving his Shabbos HaGadol sermon that week and that Zandel should attend. She said, who knows? Well, there might be something that the Rebbe would say that could help them in some way. So, thinking that he had nothing to lose, he went to the shul to listen to the Apta Rebbe's special Shabbat sermon. The Rebbe began. You know, he said there are two blessings, two brachot, that refer to God Almighty as the Redeemer of Israel. One is Goal Yisrael, which we recite daily in the weekday Amida, in the end of the seventh prayer, where look upon our affliction. The other is Ga'al Yisrael, which is recited on the night of Pesach, in our Passover Haggadah. So the question becomes, what is the difference between the two expressions? He answered that the word Ga'al Yisrael, that we recite on, at the Seder on the night of Pesach, is written in the past tense. After all, we are thanking God Almighty, for redeeming us from the Egyptian bondage which occurred in the past, many years ago, to our ancestors in Egypt. However, the words Goel Yisroel, that we recite in our daily weekday Amida, well, they are written in the present tense. We are, since we are asking God Almighty to save us 
from all of our present troubles and difficulties. This prayer takes into account the constant miracles that God Almighty performs for us each and every day of our lives when we are in need of his assistance, which is always. Zanvil thought that these words were encouraging, but really not particularly useful for him in his present situation, so he began to walk out of the synagogue. However, he froze when the Opti Rebbe began to give an example to illustrate his point. Well, then he caught Zanvil's full attention. The Rebbe said, let's say there is a Jew who lives in a faraway village. Well, we'll call him Zanvil. Let's say that the Ports is threatening to evict Zanvil and his family from the inn if he doesn't pay up all the back rent that he owes. So what does Zanvil do? The Rebbe paused. I'll tell you what he does. He cries out to God Almighty, his Father in Heaven, to help him. As it states in the Pesach Haggadah, Don Nitzach El Hashem. And the Jews cried out to Hashem, to God in Egypt. The verse then continues and says, V'yishma es kolom. And he, God Almighty, heard their voices. Again, salvation. Tonight, shouted the Rebbe, is the night of the Seder. It is a propitious time of godly compassion, a time when God Almighty hears and accepts all of our prayers. And I know of a special treasure, a skula, that would pass down to me, that when you reach the words in the Haggadah of Nitzhak El Hashem, that you should lift up your voices and cry out to God your Father in Heaven and pray with all your heart for His assistance with any specific or personal pain that you are experiencing. Someone who cries out at that moment is guaranteed that their voice will be heard by God. Just as the children of Israel were answered in Egypt on this very special night, and in an instant they were redeemed, so too will you be answered and redeemed of all your troubles on this very special night. Well, Zanville couldn't get home quick enough. He told his wife that this year, when the family reaches the words in the Haggadah of Nitzhak al Hashem, that the whole family is going to scream out to God, our benevolent Father in heaven, as loud as we can, and ask him to save us from being evicted by the pirates. And so it was. When the family reached that place in the Haggadah, well, they all screamed out to God Almighty at the top of their lungs. In fact, they screamed so loud that they couldn't hear that there was someone banging at their front door. Finally, when they quieted down, Zambal was able to hear that someone was banging on the door. He answered the door and standing in front of him was his Gentile neighbor. In his hands, he held two sacks. Quickly, his neighbor reached inside the door and placed the two sacks on the floor. He told Zandal that he was running away from the police. He said that he knew that Zandal was an honest man and that he could be trusted. So he was leaving the two sacks of gold with him. The neighbor said that if he returned, then one sack would be his and the other would belong to Zandal. However, if he didn't make it, then both sacks would belong to Zandal. Before Zandal could say anything, his neighbor disappeared into the darkness of the night. The next morning, Zandal heard the news that his neighbor had drowned in the river trying to make his escape and that he was dead. Zandal's fortunes had changed overnight. He was now able to pay off the parts. He can now live a comfortable life together with his wife, children, and even grandchildren. After the umtiv was over, Zanfil went to see the Apta Rebbe to thank him and to tell him all that occurred. The Rebbe listened, and he agreed that clearly it was heaven who had chosen his words that Shabbat. But he assured Zanfil that in the end, it was his own simple faith that had brought about his salvation, crying out to God our Father in heaven with a pure belief that he will help us, is the source of all the blessing that we receive in this world. So what is our most powerful weapon? The blessing that was given to Jacob our father, Yaakov Avinu, by his father Yitzchak. It was Hakol called Yaakov, that the voice is the voice of Yaakov. We need to cry out to God Almighty, our Father in Heaven. This is our strength, a power that exists over and above even the words of our prayers. You know, in the 13th blessing of our daily request in the Amida, the standing prayer, we begin with the word Shema Koleinu, 
hear our voices. You know, it's not until the next sentence that we beseech God to kabel to filosenu, to accept our prayers. When we pray, we articulate words that express our needs and wants. We try to convince God Almighty that he should shower us with his benevolence, even though we may not deserve it. However, the cold, the cry of a child to their loving father, needs no words. It needs no merit. It originates from the depths of our soul, a place that is deeper than any words that we could possibly recite. This is the one place where we can truly connect with God Almighty, our benevolent Father in heaven. He heard our call. He heard our voice when we were subjected to the cruel and oppressive slavery in Egypt. He heard our call. He heard our voice when we were threatened with total extermination at the hands of the evil Haman. He heard our call. He heard our voice as our grandparents were being led to the gas chambers and crematoriums in Auschwitz and Bergen-Belsen. Today, Rahman al may he once again show us his mercy, since once again we need to cry out to him to hear our call, to hear our voice after the massacre on October 7th that was perpetrated against our brethren in Israel. It may be true that he deserves better than us, but we are still his Bani B'chori Yisrael, his firstborn child, Israel. We may not deserve his salvation. Sadly, we have taken his patience and his blessings for granted. But a child-parent relationship is not based on merit, nor is it based on logic. It supersedes everything and anything that is based only on unconditional love. When we turn to him, we, when we are forced to acknowledge that we stand alone, alone without anyone else to turn to, it is said that more often than not we turn to God only as a last resort when all else fails. If only we would turn to him initially, you know, the story of our tumultuous history would have read much different than it has. His greatest desire is to shower us with all that is good. If only we would allow him to do so. You know, this coming Monday night, when we are all gathered around our Seder tables, together with our family and friends, let us remember that we have a Father in Heaven who loves us all dearly. He is waiting. He never stops listening. He never stops caring. All he is waiting for is for us to nitzak el Hashem, for us to cry out to him for salvation. Then, as our benevolent Father, he will certainly answer our cry in the, affirmative, in the affirmative and bring about our complete salvation. So just like Zanville, when we recite these words in our Haggadah, let us all raise up our coal, our voices, and cry out to our benevolent Father in heaven and say to him that it is time, time for him to end the war in Gaza with a complete and decisive victory against Hamas and all the evil that exists in the world today. It's time for him to bring home the hostages. It's time for him to heal the injured. It's time for him to comfort the mourners. It's time for him to bring home all of our brave IDF soldiers safely, led by Mashiach Sakenu. Quickly, let it be now. You know, you hear stories, but do they really mean something? Are they really true? A couple of years back, I told this story to a good friend of mine. Sadly, his wife was diagnosed with cancer, and the doctor told her that she had six weeks to live. When I talked to him, it was before Pesach. He and his family, when they reached the words of Nisach al Hashem, they cried out to God. She didn't live for six weeks. She lived for a year and nine months. Don't waste the opportunity. It's an important time, an important prayer, and a time when the world needs us to cry out to God to bring Mashiach now. Again, thank you very much for listening. And again, let me wish you a Chag Posh Kosher B'Sameach, a happy and healthy holiday with you and your family. Again, it's the beginning. Beginnings are always so important. God redeemed the Jews from Egypt on this holiday. God saved Abraham when he went after the four kings on this time. All the miracles that have done throughout history. Who says God can't do it? End the war in Gaza. Again, and bring Mashiach now. Again, thank you for listening. Again, please uh, subscribe and 
and uh, push like and share with your friends. Again, uh, see you hopefully in three weeks. God bless, be well, and uh, enjoy the wine and matzah. God bless you. Take care. There will be a music rendition right after this, again, to deal with the situation that we have with the song. Thank you so much for listening. God bless and be well.